In this lesson for Bobcat Cam, we're going to cover the multi-axis posting page that's used along with the machine setup and the parameters from the post processor itself. We're also going to show you how you can limit or control how the output is actually outputted on what the angles are and which direction the machine moves and everything. So to get to this page, you're going to right click milling tools, you're going to go to default to set it up for the first time in current settings. Make sure you have the right machine chosen. For this case, let's look at the 5X Bobcat Mill. And then we're going to go down to the multi-axis posting page. Now these are all things that are, are to do with your machine, how they're set up, how they're going to move, and so forth, and how things are handled. The first thing is the angle pair. What this is telling you is there's really two solutions to outputting code. That's the first solution and second or other solution. I mean, the first solution is going to try and find the machine movements that are closest to its last position or last movement position. So you can select between the two solutions. You can provide a first solution or a second rotation angle for it to try to come to. So if you select between the two, you want to use the first or other. So if it's on first, it's just the normal output. It'll try and generate something out. You go to simulation and see how it moves. If you don't like that, let's say, for instance, the table rotates the part to the back and you can't see it. You want it to rotate to the front. You would come back in here, switch it to the other. You don't have to repost. Go back into simulation, repost your code and it will go the other way and you'll be able to see that. Now if you set first rotation angle and give it a value, it will go from where it's at to the new position and do a movement as close as possible to the value that you give it. So you can specify or try to specify how you want to do that. You have auto angle pair where it will find on its own or you can turn that off and it's just going to give you the one, the one option. The machine limits are used to confirm that the machine limits are not exceeded. The angle tolerance for using machine limits is a value which the selected machine limits can vary. If you set machine limits on an axis between 0 and 90 degrees and then set an angle tolerance of 2, the possible angle range becomes minus 2 to 92 degrees. Angle change limit. The angle change limit is a value in degrees to limit the amount of angle change from one toolpath position to the next. And then what is that applying to? Are you applying that to all the limits, to no limits, so you're turning it off, translation limits only, or rotational limits only? So you have your options there. The defaults are usually pretty good on this. Pole handling. You have some options in here. Now what the pole handling is, when you use a five-axis machine, and it has to do a three-axis toolpath position, there's um, certain situations that can make the C-axis value arbitrary, which means that by changing the X and Y axis values appropriately, the C axis values used creates the same results. So pretty much what it's saying is, do you want it to use the X and Y to cut those, or do you want to use like the rotation axis to cut the three axis positions? So you can do that with these. So you can freeze around angle pole. What this one's going to do is fixes the rotation axis in order to use the linear axis. Use rotation around pole to stay within linear axis limits. This is where it exceeds the linear axis limitations and will use the rotationals to achieve that extra distance. Linear interpolation of rotation angle around pole. This calculates axis to make changes from one value to the next in linear fashion. Smoothing is just that. It's similar to linear interpolation but it manipulates the table rotation speeds for a more fluent translation uh, between points. And then you can just force the table rotation to get to where you want. And then what's the pole angle tolerance? Controls the angle between the tool axis orientation and the pole or the main spindle direction. Tool repositioning, if you've got a lift to reposition, how high do you want it to lift or a rewind on a four axis rotary? If, you want to, if your machine has to lift for a rewind, how high is it going? That's where you're setting here. 10 inches up or retract to the maximum the machine can lift. Point interpolation, you have by vector or by machine angle. So if you do it by vector, it creates an interpolation between the two endpoints of a toolpath segment in the shortest possible way. By machine angle, this one creates an interpolation between the two points of the toolpath segment gradually. And you can also set feed move max distance and angles and limits and so forth. 
And then you have the machine definition. Now, this is probably one of the most important things you want to watch when you're setting up your jobs and everything and to set up your machine. Real machine zero or work offset position. The real machine zero setting is the most commonly used one. This is for people that are going to use like set a G54 and so forth. And on your machine, you're just going to zero a spot on the part and that's your zero of your job. When you use this, there's inside the machine setup where you set your part zero in the cam tree, which I'll show you, there's a work shift amount. If you have it on real machine zero and you set a work shift amount, that's just for simulation purposes of moving your part around the simulation. It has no effect on the G code. The other option are for people that work off of the machine home. For instance, if you set this up here, whatever values are in your work offset would be how far your part is from that machine home position on your machine. And they will affect the G code output because they are changing the distance from that machine home position to your part zero on your part. So what you would have to do in this case is you would have to home your machine, set up your part on your machine, find the corner, let's say you want it to zero, and then record the numbers from the machine home to that position, come into Bobcat and load those into the work offset. So very important you know which one of these you're set up on here. Then you have your limits. Some machines have the ability to control limits of rotation on their hardware. Some don't. This also gives you the ability to say no limit, limit between 0 to 360 and, and 180 minus 180. So you can control limits here as well. Then you have your move list, and this is the Z, how it handles the Z. No machine compensation does nothing. It just does all the output as standard numbers. A machine compensation is the only, is the G43 style where it's taking care of the tool length offsets and calling those values in the machine. A hybrid is a combination of TCP based and the machine Z. TCP outputs all the moves based off of the workpiece zero point or machine setup origin. This is commonly used with machine controllers that support TCP or tool center point compensation. And again, the hybrid one just above it, the hybrid mix mode, Outputs all moves based off of the table absolute zero position with tool length composition along the tool axis. And then the Z only outputs all moves based off the absolute machine zero with tool length composition and Z only. This mode is commonly used with the G43, remember. That's probably your most common one that you'll use is the machine compensation and Z only. So it's very important to get all these set up in here. Now what can these do for you? Well, I have this sample part of just a five axis index one we use for setting up our machines. And if I come in here, you'll see first of all on the machine setup, if I go to edit it and the work offset that I was talking about, now I'm on real machine zero. So these numbers won't affect my G code, but I, since my part zero is on the top, I don't want the part to be down inside the part. Let's make it zero first and show you what would happen when I go to simulate it. Takes a second to open up. So here when I zoom in, you see how the zero is at the top of the plate, where the zero for my machine is. That's no good for simulation purposes. It will still come out correct on the G code, but for simulation, that's no good. So what you do is you go into here, your work offset, and just give this a value. Usually the thickness of the part's fine. Now this is for the real machine zero setting, because it won't affect the G code. So now when I go into my simulation, you'll see that the part is sitting up above the table. So now I can simulate it. Let's run the first part of the toolpath here. I'm going to slow this way down and hit play. It's going to run the top. And then notice it rotates the part back. The table comes up in front of me. That's saying that on my machine, that's the actual movement I'm going to get. So when I see that, I'm, I'm not going to be able to see my part too good on the machine possibly. I might want that to go the other way and rotate the part, the table to the back and the part to the front. Well, that's where that page came in that we looked at. So if I go back into my milling tools, we'll go to part to change this to one job, current settings and multi-axis posting. And I go from first solution to other solution. That's all I'm going to change. And go back into the simulation. This will take a second to come back up. Okay, so let's get this back up here a little bit. Let's hit play. Now notice I'm going to stop it right there, how it went the way we wanted it now, because it went from the first solution to the other solution. So as you can see how some of those things are very easy to come in and change, and then just go back in there. Now when I post our code, that's the machine movement we'll get out of the machine. You can also limit these things inside there as well. Remember you have your limitations of 0 to 180 and so forth and so on. 
Now there's also a couple of other settings I want you to be aware of. I'm just going to pull up this post right here. I'm going to go into edit and we're going to use the BC table table. I'm going to right click on that and edit it. And let me close this down here. Bring that back up. Okay, this is the post processor for this five axis. Okay, so we're going to come down here to, let's just scoot down the line 440. 440 through 444. What is the rotary output type? Absolute. Signed absolute. Signed continuous. So what is your rotary output type? You want to make sure that's chosen. This is signed continuous. Signed means positive and negative rotation options. Multi-axis feed types. Inverse on rotary. Inverse on all. Inverse time feed. All that stuff is settable in here. Wrapping X axis is primary. Wrapping Y axis is secondary. Wrapping Z axis is. So you can see you have some settings here. The next ones we're going to come down here are to the 690-ish range. And you have your prefixes. So this is the prefix that's going to come out for X rotation move. So, and also the Y rotation move. So no matter what machine rotation act, a piece you pick when you set up your machine, I could put R in here, for instance, and that's what's going to come out in the G code by the actual degree amount. So just because we say, hey, we got to pick the C, and it's supposed to be a B on my machine, that's just a machine set up virtually in the background. The post processor is the last thing that handles the code before it's spit out to the machine. So if you have X is A and Y is B, and that's what your machine uses, that's what they'll come out as. If you need an R and a V, put those in here, and those will come out that way as well. And now we're going to come down to the 710 area right down here. And you have some settings down through here. You could see you have primary rotation, clockwise direction codes, clamping codes, RCTP, second rotary prefix string, rotary forward direction strings plus, minus, and so forth, primary rotary prefix string, a lot of different options down in there as well. So all these also do work along with the machine, but multi-axis posting page, the regular posting page, and the settings in your post processor to create your G code now. In the older versions, it was just the post processor was mainly what looked at the toolpath and spit it out. But all these are working together now to um, achieve that. So between the multi-axis posting page and some of these settings in here, like sign continuous, I only want positive movements. So I can turn off the continuous to make it a one, signed absolute positioning, or only positive uh, movements, and so forth in here and those can control how it outputs. So a little bit there on how things are handled from the multi-axis posting side of the software. This concludes this lesson.